Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. And today I have with me a special guest, Peter Montgomery of the Peter Montgomery Show. Welcome to the show, Peter. Hey, Vitaly. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, it's great to have you on. Um, I'm going to jump right in. And I want to start off by, first of all, asking you, what do you do? Tell us what you do and how you get started online. Okay. Um, well, I have uh, The Peter Montgomery Show, which can be found at thepetermontgomeryshow.com. And what I do is I interview influential speakers, entrepreneurs, and authors. And originally, I was finding out how they became successful. So a lot of my early episodes are kind of like almost bio, uh, like biographies of, of successful uh, speakers, entrepreneurs, and authors. And it's kind of evolved over time to kind of highlighting specific businesses and really helping those businesses um, to help their potential clients really understand what it is that they do so they can connect with the heart of their business uh, and really just sort of what I aim to do is to really make business transparent online. So I, I, my intention is to highlight the good guys, uh, particularly in the internet marketing space. So you interview experts in a variety of different fields, everything business related, helping entrepreneurs, small businesses, online marketers. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when I started, I had a particular interest in speakers. And then as you go into that industry, I, I found uh, sort of other aspects of the industry that kind of interested me as well. So I kind of followed my interest at first and uh, it, it kind of evolved to, to spread out a little bit. Everyone kind of says niche down, niche down. I kind of got started and just like discovering a whole lot of stuff uh, first up um, so, that can, so that I can really understand more about what's out there and what's available. And then what I'm actually aiming to do is to niche down even further. Now I've discovered a whole lot of other stuff out there and kind of... Um, highlighting people that are doing similar things online, not so much an interview show, but similar in, in the way that they network, they connect, and they and help other business owners be better at business. So that's that's really who I'm really looking for, people that have so, yeah, something that's in alignment with me, but not necessarily a show or interviews, but our, both our intentions are in alignment so we can kind of work together to, to help promote entrepreneurship. Okay, that's great. So let me let me ask you this. What led you to starting your own show? Because I, I know your story of how you got started online, and I'm going to ask you to tell that story because uh, <laughs> I think it's important for people to know, uh, you know, where would so, where does somebody start and how do they get to where they are in, 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 the, in the path that they've taken. So uh, tell us, you know, how you started uh, and what led you, first of all, before actually, before even starting your own show, what led you to online marketing? You know, what did you see with online marketing? How did you get involved with this whole crazy world? Yes, it, it's a nut, nutty world. Um, how I started was I actually, I'll have to go back. I'll, I'll try and like um, leapfrog through the years and kind of direct you towards like particular signposts that, that kind of led me from one thing to the next. So 20 years ago, I was playing in bands. I'm a bass player, as you can see. I've got my, always got my bass in the background. Um, and so I was playing... That's the beauty of internet marketing, that you can stop any time and just play guitar and pick up four That's right, yeah. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I was playing in bands, and back then there was no internet. It didn't exist. It uh, There was definitely no, no uh, other way to promote a band and do anything other than go to gigs, hand out flyers in the street, um, where you see, you know, particularly if, you, if you've got a, you're in a metal band and you've got a metal gig heavy metal, you see a kid in a, in a Slayer shirt, you walk up to him and say, hey man, there's this heavy metal gig going on at the hall in two weeks time, here's a flyer, stick it on your fridge, tell your friends. And that flyer was, you know, they, they were gold, it was like, wow, this is what I'm doing, and they'd stick it on their fridge and they, they'd make sure it stayed there and protect it, and they'd, they'd show their friends, they might even photocopy it and get it, get it out to the, to the street. So the, it's the same as social networks, but in, you know, it's, it's in real life. So we learned how to um, promote a gig, put on an event, get people in the door, sell stuff once they got there. So the show was a draw card, drew people in, and then we could sell them T-shirts, CDs, drinks, food, whatever, extra stuff on the back end. Uh, and the, the intention really wasn't to make money. It was to get exposure for our band, have a good time, and then you know build build out from there. So you start local, then you go to the next town, and you go to the next town. You're trying, trying to build a brand exactly like you're doing now, except there was no internet and everything was hands-on. Everyone you come into contact with, you could literally touch them. And so, from how do people live without internet? <laughs> Look at how what bands survive? do these days is, is <laughs> insane. So, I've always been in the mindset that I want to do my own thing as opposed to just working a job. I, I'm, I'm not normal. Um, and that whole, I, I don't like when people slam having a job because sometimes having a job is good. 
Uh, a job is good when you need one and you don't have one. Um, I prefer my, my own thing if I can make that happen. So that was my first step into that world, you know, from the age of 15 to like 23. Real life kicks in. You realize um, you haven't taken the world by storm yet and you need money and you've got bills to pay and you start to grow a family, that kind of thing. So you start to get a little bit more serious about, okay, income is more than just something that you can blow. So then I, you know, I ended up into the job world, um, selling phones for Optus. A friend of mine said, well, if you can sell phones for Optus, your customer service side's all right. I've got a job if you want it. And it was being a courier delivering toner to Xerox customers. Then that led Xerox going, hey, we like you. Basically, I think I turn up on time and they don't have to worry about me. Let's train you up and be a technician. So they trained me up. I was five years at Xerox as a technician. And I got the bug again. I just went, I can't handle this corporate, this job thing. It just doesn't gel with me. Just the treadmill. What can I do? So the friend who got me started there, he had actually rise, rose, risen in management in Xerox. He left, started a business selling ex lease Xerox machines. And my last year at Xerox, I prepared um, he with him. He prepared his customers to say, "I've got a guy coming out of Xerox who can now service the machines I'm selling you." And for a year, he kind of primed these customers. I left Xerox with fifteen grand. I saved up. I spent a third of it nice. on the car, probably a third of it tooling up in uniforms, laptops, equipment, and I had five grand to pay the bills for the rest of my life and no backup plan. Hmm. That was my first business. And he guided me for the next three years on, he was like a mentor, but not like these business coaches. It was just like, his name was George. And if I had a problem, I'd say, hey, George, this just happened with this customer. What do I do? What do I say? And he'd go, okay, tell him this, this, and this, blah, blah, blah. I'd do it. I'd execute it. And it was like, the customer had the reaction he kind of predicted. It was like, oh, okay. And then the more we had situations like that, I got used to dealing with customers, clients, problems. And then I kind of didn't really need to refer to him all the time. It was, it just became a part of me. So I had a, a mentor for three years. Um, so we grew that business and that went really well. Then the economy turned. I didn't, it wasn't like I knew this economy turned. It was just kind of, I just noticed customers aren't ringing me as much. And what I also noticed was, um, uh, if I don't go out and service a machine, I'm not getting paid. So I, for three years, I never had holiday pay. I had to save up money, and that's what we had to go with holidays. So you'd save up money, you go on holidays, you come back with nothing, and you'd have to start again, and you would believe that the customers are going to ring you back at the start of the next year, and they did. So for three years, that was great. But that started to turn down. I got so busy, I couldn't take on new business. He uh, started finding other people to, to use for service, I was the only show in town in Sydney at the time, but then other people started cotton, getting onto it and going, okay, I could do that too. Um, so he started using other people. So I stopped getting new business because I had no lead generation systems in place other than him and other guys like him who, who started using me throughout Sydney. They were my leads. So we'd put a sticker on the machine with our name and number. If it breaks down, call Pete. That was my whole lead generation system. So no one's given me business anymore because I've, I've said no for too long to new customers. Then everyone's business has started kind of winding down a bit and I had no customers. And so what happened then was I also thought if I leave Sydney, I have no business because I have to start something again from the ground up because everything is like it was in the band days. You have, it's physical. It's like location based outside of Sydney. I have no business. So if I leave to start a new life somewhere else, I'll have to start something. So I thought I may as well do that now. What can that be? And I trialed probably 20 different things in my head on paper working out different things. And I thought they're all kind of the same. They're all, I have to go somewhere and do something. I could do a lawn mowing business, but I still had to go and mow that lawn. I could do a landscaping thing and tidy up yards. It was like, I still had to go there and do the work. And so I thought that's what I'm trying to get away from. What is there? So I turned to the internet and that's where Vitali, you come into it because in my searches, what one of the things I was trying to create in my head was I love audio equipment. And I thought I could do what my mate did when he started selling X lease Xerox machines, I thought I could do X lease professional recording equipment. And I started sourcing out where I could find this equipment to fill up a warehouse. I thought I can start a website and promote it there and get people to kind of look my own personal eBay type thing. So people want something, I've got it. Yep, cool. They call me, I, I ship it out. And so uh, what I did, I started searching around in my searches for, I was cold calling insurance companies, um, you know, uh, those debt retrieval companies that sort of, you know, they end up with equipment and all this stuff. I was thinking, just trying to source the gear. And in that search, I come across, uh, uh, I've still got it down here, actually. It was online. It was a guy called Peter Sun. And he had a, how to build a $1 million profit per year business seminar. It was a 
forty-seven dollars or something to go to. And yeah, he's, he's a he's a big direct response market that's been around for a long time. Yeah. You know? So so what I did, I, I looked through. I, by the end of his sales letter, I was panicking that I wasn't going to get the free ticket or make it. I've got to get to the seminar. I was ringing New Zealand because that's where I think he was based at the time or their office was. Can, do I have the ticket? Is it, I, I subscribe. What's happening? And that's how good his copy was. I was like, oh, this is my first ever long sales letter. And I come to the end of it thinking I wasn't going to get the deal. So I, after the phone call, I kind of figured out that all the tickets are free. And uh, so anyway, a week later, two weeks later, I went to his event. In the meantime, this is where video marketing, this is where I really got hooked. Because whenever I was researching a piece of vi uh, audio equipment, I would watch YouTube videos and I'd, to see what it's all about and read reviews and go to forums. And that's kind of just how I studied. I had three main sort of websites I hung out on. And when I started researching information on him, I started seeing videos of him live at a seminar, teaching lessons and sitting in front of a whiteboard, giving lessons about certain business, uh, business things and marketing ideas. And I thought, this is great. Like, because I wanted to know what I was going to be in for when I got to the event and I got a good view of it. Then as I was researching those videos on Google, uh, a clever guy had an ad on the side in the, the paid advertising that said, X Peter Sun student makes X amount of dollars, makes a lot of money or make $10,000 per month or something on, along those lines. And I went, wow, I want to see what this guy did because he's following the information that I was just about to go to. I wonder yeah. what he did. Click on the link. I get Vitaly's uh, page for a product and a, a subscription to an internet marketing training system he was offering at the time. And that was an expensive buy-in. And I thought, wow, this, this must be good. And what I really did was I engaged with the video. Vitaly's video it went for 10 minutes. I'd never seen anything like it. And it was just basically Vitaly explaining a bit about the system, what it does for you, what he's been through, his story of how he became an internet marketer. And it kind of looks probably a little bit similar to that. I think there were some books in the shelf and you told me it basically. I think I recorded it right here. So <laughs> yeah. <And laughs> I so, record everything here. So yeah. <laughs> and so what happened was I looked at that and he goes, look, opt into this next page and I'll show you what, what that system was that I found. And, and you, you'll get to hear from the guy who created it. And it was what I connected with, I think, was just your authenticity, just your honesty. I thought, well, you know, it's worth checking out. Basically, I, I just felt like I knew you. Now, after that 10 minute video, I kind of, I liked you. I thought, you know, he's, he's a good guy. And I had that element of trust where I went, okay, well, I'll opt in and see what there is. And it was you, you, that first training system that you sold. And I, sight unseen, I'd never met you before. I kind of looked at it for about a week. Can, I, can I stop you for a second? Because yep. I, I, I want I want you to continue the story, but I want to make an important point here because I want people to understand that this is what marketing is all about, Okay. You were searching for something, and I forgot to mention, by the way, that Pete is in Australia, right? You're in Sydney? Yep. And I'm in uh, Detroit, Michigan. Well, not in Detroit. Like, you don't want to live in Detroit, but I'm on the outskirts of Detroit uh, in Michigan in the States here. So uh, that's halfway around the world. And um, there would be no other place where Pete and I would cross our paths if it wasn't for the Internet. And this is what marketing is all about. Is, is getting in front of a moving parade of people that are searching for something. So you were searching for something specific. I happened to use an angle, okay, mm. uh, which which I thought was clever. Well, you, cleverly, you pointed out that it was clever, and it was clever. I, I've used a lot of angles like that. Peter Sun wasn't the only one at the time that I was using it um, to find people that were searching for this type of information because those people were the most likely candidates for, for what I was doing. So this is totally different. You know, people starting online, people starting in direct response need to, need to understand that this is totally different than picking up a, a phone because that's what I used to do in my previous uh, uh, business life. Uh, you know, you pick up a phone and you call people hoping you'll get somebody who's interested. Your whole goal with internet marketing really is to put yourself in a position where people who are looking for something that you're either offering or, or something similar to that, something along those lines, and they see you, and they respond to. That's where you know the word direct response comes from. So this is this is key here. And I wanted to just make that point that you found me because you were searching for something specific, and I just happened to be in your path. I didn't just I didn't reach out to you. You reached out to me because you were you were going this way, and I happened to plant my billboard in the exact road that you were traveling at that point. And that is what marketing is all about. And you want to put those billboards in as many places as you can, but only on the roads that your best potential customers and prospects travel so to speak so kind of, mm. kind of an analogy there so i just want to make that point but go go, go ahead and, and so what, what happened then you know so you saw my ad and, and you saw the video and you clicked and you, you opted in 
and uh, you know now you got your show. So what 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 happened? <laughs> Okay, what happened was... Uh, what happened, <laughs> a lot of things happened. <laughs> a lot of things happened, but what yeah. the most important thing that happened there was you targeted me perfectly. So the psychology behind your whole approach was perfect because I'm trying to figure out on the back end, I'm thinking of, you know, coming from a business background, I'm thinking of parts, supplies, warehousing, sales, uh, stock room, keeping, you know, inventory, uh, actually going out and, and delivering, all this stuff was going through my head and the product that you offered totally solved all of those problems. Everything... Every question I had was answered in the copy of the videos and the information and the, you know, in the text of the copy. It was like, I don't have to worry about warehousing, shipping products, doing any of this. That's all taken care of. All you need to do is get people in front of exactly how you described, get people in front of something that makes sense. They click on it and then the offer is displayed. And it was like, that was perfect. So what I did then was I, I bought it. So I'd never met Vitaly in my life. Only The only thing I saw was that video and I laid down because the exchange rate between Australia and, and uh, America at the time was, was huge. I think it was $2,500 all told to, to get into that system. But for me as an Australian, I think it ended up being like about three grand or something. And I was literally sitting in my garage where um, it was my recording studio with uh, an envelope. Where I just sold a bunch of equipment, audio equipment. I was about to buy something else because that's what I kind of do. I buy something, I sell it, I get something else that I want at the time. And I had a, an envelope with $2,150 in it in money, like in cash. And I was looking at it and I was looking at your offer. And I was, you know, it was kind of like in the Simpsons, you know, dental plan, loosen these braces, dental plan, <laughs> loosen these braces. I'm looking at the money. I'm looking at the offer. And I spent two weeks doing that a week, a week or two doing that. I remember and, you did call me though. We, yeah. We I, I, I saved up. I got the rest of the money. Then I paid for it. I got online and I, I put the money down and I spent three grand with someone I'd never met across the other side of the world. And it wasn't like I was buying hope or like I knew what the offer meant. That the, the thing that got me the most wasn't that there was a product to sell. It was I was going to be trained in internet marketing. So what I did at $150 US a month, I, to me, it ended up being like 300 bucks a month, which I didn't have to spare. I didn't have, I wasn't rich. I didn't have a lot of money. And so I was spending 300 bucks a month, but I was like pouring over this information, extracting it, watching the webinars, learning everything about video marketing, article marketing, blogging. Uh, yeah, it, was a pretty, it, was, it was a pretty in-depth training that we were promoting there. It, it wasn't just people know. It wasn't a program I created. I wasn't a, a, an affiliate or reseller, so to speak, of the program. And, and that's what Pete was doing yeah. is he purchased a program just like I did. Because I had to do the same thing before. And uh, you purchased the rights to basically become an affiliate. And, and I could sell go on it. and sell that. So that was the beginning. You, you learn how to sell it. Then you sell it, right. and then you get other people to learn how to sell it and sell it. But on the right. back end, there are other products that it sells as well. What you're selling is like gold. You know, it's really good training, yeah. and that's and I appreciated it for that. And then I spent a year in there doing that. Didn't have great results because when you're first starting anything, I always think of it like a mechanic. As an apprentice, even after a year, you don't know anything anywhere near like the guys that have been working on cars for 15, 20 years. You know, they come across a problem, they just know what it is. But an apprentice, you don't know what you don't know. So that I kind of I understood that, that there's going to be a learning process and it was going to take a long time. As, there, as always, it took longer than I thought, but I, I applied myself to it and I was committed to make it work. Then I found the top guys, the top five guys in that system to see what they were doing with their system as well because I, I wanted to connect with people. I found a guy who was a bass player who I connected with the most out of that five. Again, it's the relationship. So I connected. His name is Brian Finale. So I connected with him. I reached out to him and said, what are you doing? And he showed me another system that he was doing, that he was selling, which was a third of the price. And in my opinion, was even better because he'd trained up in that and then created something based around the problems that that thing has. Uh, yeah, so I answered a lot of those things. So I didn't jump ship. I actually had both going in tandem for another year. Then I was another two years. So basically all up three years, internet marketing, solid training to get to the point of the show was. And this was back in 2009, right? 2009, so we're talking so 2009, 2010, 2011, you were kind of putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. That, that's how I look at internet marketing. Yeah. There's all these pieces, right? So many moving and in, the and in the beginning, it's like, you know, what do you do? <laughs> Where do you start? And that's it. But I, I was overwhelmed. I was frustrated. I was angry. I cried. I was ripping my hair out, just like all those good copywriters know how to say that stuff, because that's why I signed up to them in the first place. Hair, pu hair, hair pulling frustration. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was. I went through all that stuff, right? But I, I just, I just knew that I've got to figure this internet thing out because it, that's everything is in the internet these days in business. If I master this, then I can have the life that I want. And so I started my first business early 2006 discovered internet stuff in 2000 and 
uh, nine. Then spent 2009 to the end of 2012, totally engrossed, trying everything, trying to make it all work. In that meantime, how I was saying that copy of business, that died a natural death. And I, I particularly didn't really want to keep pursuing that anyway, because I wanted this internet thing. Nothing internet took off, because I was trying you didn't to... Have, you didn't have to burn your bridges. You <laughs> kind of just evaporated, and you were set free to go pursue this. <laughs> That's right. Set free in the way that... Because oh, you know what? That, that a lot of people are held back by something that they have going on, you know, and, and they think, well, I don't want to let that go just in case this doesn't work. And it's hard because you're trying to go after two completely different things. And sometimes you end up just spinning your wheels. And, you know, yeah. so well, that, that was probably is, a good thing. <laughs> I think this is a big key lesson because what I was doing was 6,000 things. So I was trying to be the, I was trying to be and do every lesson that I learned all at the same time. Which um, that's, that's you a, can't that, do. That's what typical entrepreneurs do. I'm we, trying to be called the best entrepreneurial. It, it's called entrepreneurial ADD. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I did the same thing. You go I, into all. I think directions. everyone goes through it. I think everyone goes through it. So if you're going through that right now, you're not alone. So I'm I'm trying to. How be, did you deal with it? Let me let me ask you this. Okay. How did you How did you deal with it? The show. Is people how I listening dealt with to it. this. Some some people are going to listen to this and they say, "Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going through." You know. Okay. I, I try to spell things out as much as as much as I can and, and, and break things down in, in as simple steps as I can. But one of the challenges is that there are a lot of steps. There are a lot of moving pieces. How did you deal with it? Okay. What happened was the way I dealt with it was that I crashed and burned. The copy of business went down. Nothing else had taken off. I had rent to pay next week and I had no money and no income source. And in desperation, I reached out to a, a, one of my old clients who I'd helped set up their blog at one time. I said, if you've got a job, if you know anyone who's got a job, I need something this week so I can pay rent next week. It was that desperate. And in a state of utter depression, because everything I'd tried, everything I'd been doing for six years, had just burned to the ground and there was nothing, like absolutely desperate. So I ended up getting a job at a, a fish market type place for about a month and a half, hauling fish and ice for 12 mm -hmm. hours a day, six days a week. It was the hardest work I've ever, ever done. Every job I've ever had was encapsulated in that one job and it, I hated it, but it was the best thing that could have happened to me because it forced me to start again. And I, what I did in that time, I thought, well, what am I going to do? And that's when I actually sat back and just had the chance to go, what worked in six years? What didn't work? Why didn't it work? Why did it work? What do I love to do the most? What am I going to do? I'm going to pick one thing, just one thing, and I'm going to master that one thing, which for three years in that internet space, that's everything that they told me. For some reason, it just didn't sink in. You know, if, you, if you want to master video, master it. Don't do anything else. Don't write articles. Just do video. If you want to master articles, just do articles. You want to be the best copywriter, just do copywriting and, and sell affiliates. I, I couldn't agree more because and that's what you I did. can't be the best in everything. So you got to pick something that, and so, uh, so that for you're me, good at picked, or your strength. And, yeah. What I picked was interviewing. I thought that's the most fun I had. And it, it's, it uh, not solves a problem. It creates situations that are beneficial to everyone involved. And I thought that's what I want to do. So like what we're doing now, this is beneficial to the per the person who's watching. This is going to get yeah, a few gold nuggets of insight that they can then apply to what they're doing. Uh, it's great for me. It's great for you. Everyone sort of gets publicized. Everyone wins. And I thought, I love that whole scenario. I've done it before a few times and, I, and it was really cool, but I can easily now because of the training I've done, I can easily put that on a video. I can easily put that onto a blog and do a bit of copy descriptions around the video to get it ranked on Google for SEO. And I know how to share that in social networks properly without being a, an, a, an idiot about it and having them share it for me, but understanding that it's not going to be a fast track system of doing things. It's going to be slowly. I'm going to attract a fan from over here, I'm going to attract a subscriber from over there. And just through consistent effort, week after week after week, just putting a video out there of an interview, one after the other, one after the other, I understood that over a long period of time, over the next one, two, five, ten years, that all this content's just going to be dripped out onto the internet. And before I know it, I'm going to have so much stuff out there taking up space in the search engines that it, in time, it's going to drag in so many viewers without... And I, I, I just took away that urgency and that desperation and anxiety that I had when I was doing this. I thought, I'm just going to do this and I'm just going to master it and do it. And that, it, that evolved into the show. So I just started reaching out to people to, to get interviews. That's kind, that, that's kind of how it started. I just pieced together everything of what I learned, stripped it all back and started again from scratch. But I pieced it together in a, in a way that made sense that I could do based around the amount of time I actually have. I've got a family, I've got four kids. I don't have a lot of time. So I thought I need to do something that's, 
as valuable and reach out as far as it can with this minimal amount of effort on my end. And you're doing what one interview a week? Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that your schedule? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I want to ask you. We're going to. I want to come back to this question about SEO and and and, and getting stuff ranked because because that's really important because you know we talk a lot about traffic and you know attracting. Um, you know, attracting people to, to your site or to your videos. But before I do that, let me ask you this, um, and then we can kind of move, move more to specifics. Yeah. Um, what was the turning point? I mean, you kind of mentioned that your, your business crashed, your, your, your offline printing business crashed. Was that the turning point, or was there something else? What was the turning point that, and well, here's what I mean by that. Let me, let me rephrase yeah. that. If I take you back to those three years, you know, during that time frame, everybody goes through, and I know I went through this, every single person goes through this, that you're, you, know, you get excited when you first get exposed to this whole internet marketing thing, uh, and you're you're sky high. You're right here, and then you start learning this stuff, and you know the excitement eventually starts fading away or, or drops a little bit uh, because you get bogged down into well, I got to learn this and I got to learn that, and you know there's all this stuff, and you know it's it, it's not just going to be you know you spend two hours and all of a sudden this money's going to come down come flying down. Or, I mean yes, you get to a point where you can send an email and make a few thousand bucks just like that, but it doesn't happen your first day or your first week or your first month. Or your first <laughs> it three years. It does happen. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, for some people, and, it, yeah. and for others, it can happen a lot faster, but yeah. but whether it's a, it's a year or three years, and for some people, it's 10 years. I mean, it really depends. Um, at some point, what happens is there comes a point where there's so everything just clicks together. I mean, you're always going to learn stuff, but at some point, everything just clicks together, and you become crystal clear that here's what I got to do. Okay, here's what I need. And all of a sudden, everything just starts coming together and you start moving. And all of a sudden, that excitement that you had initially starts kicking back up. And now you're fully energized to move forward. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. We, yeah. Okay. What was, for, what did that for you? What got you to that point where you said, you know what? I can do this. I mean, you all of a sudden, you had full confidence that I'm ready to move forward. Yeah. Uh, I think it was just actually that point of reflection. So, th- there was signposts all through those years. You had to learn all the stuff. Everything I learned, I had to learn in order to do what I'm doing, right? To make something, what I'm doing now, so easy for me, so simple, not easy, like it takes effort, but I can piece it together so simply because I put all that struggle in in the first place. So the point that I, I think it was just that moment I stepped back and I just analyzed what I did rather than getting caught up in trying to be famous, rather than caught up in trying to make money, rather than get caught up in... Uh, all the hoopla about the latest launch, the latest social network, the latest plug-in. I think that moment of reflection of being actually out of the industry when I was working so hard for that that month and a half period, just doing physical labor, I think it just, that moment of reflection. And when I came back to it and I pieced a plan together, I think that was the, the key moment was I'd done it before, here's the result, that was good. If I recreate that result, I'm sure it will be just as good again. And then when I did it, I think the moment that I knew I was onto the right thing was I had done, I think, five interviews, maybe six interviews, just a handful of interviews. And then I got an email from someone who said, hey, man, I've just been following your work. I love it. It's just, it reminds me or, you know, I'm a fan of these other two guys and I never heard of them. And then when I went and researched them after looking at his email, I looked at him and went, wow, those guys are doing what I'm doing, but they're four years further ahead. I went... I'm on the right track. I think that was the yeah. moment when he... And he, said, he, put, he put you up with them. All of a sudden, you felt that confidence. It just came to me. It was like, yeah, exactly. It yeah. was kind of... I felt like that moment that everyone wants, that authority, that little bit of authority of, I know what I'm on about and someone's recognized it. It makes you feel good. It's like, okay, someone's getting value and they're aligning me with these other people. And I think that was the moment then when other people started asking, can, Hey, could you interview this guy? He's my business partner. Could he come on your show and talk about his thing? Then I go and look at their thing and I think, wow, that guy is really good at what they're doing. And they want to come They're approaching me to come on the show. I thought, that's it. This is it. You know, I'm going to do nothing else. It, it is great because it took you from like, you know, starting a show, just having an idea. to all of a sudden in other people's eyes, you're an expert. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. all of a sudden, because you got that email, and they're comparing you to other people that have been doing this for a long time, and, and now you're an expert. That's you're right. Getting invited to shows, or you're getting uh, requests to, for people to be on your show to be interviewed. And, and this is really important because uh, one of the things that listeners of, of, and viewers of this uh, interview are, are going through is, is, is creating your own information products. And, and, and one of the things I talk about is the fact that 
you know, you don't need to be an expert, you know, to, to, to make it big in this business. I mean, when you're, when you have something, when you have a knowledge, of a certain specific knowledge of something, you know more than, let's say, most people out there about something. You're, you're already an expert. Okay? I mean, you may not view yourself as the expert, but you are an expert because if you know more about something than somebody else, then in their eyes, you're an expert. It's all how you position yourself. And, and I think the moment you can start feeling a that is... A key point is you're not just the expert. Because the guy that approached me on Facebook, we were, were in a similar group where I was, you know, kind of, I was allowed to post my videos and he was watching those videos. So we already had a connection that, hey, I'm in this group, you're in this group. He felt comfortable to come and contact me. I was the expert he knew as opposed mm -hmm. to those other guys. He couldn't reach them. They're like way high up on the ladder. I was the expert he knew in that field that he could approach. He's actually been on my show since. As a guest, okay, but um, so I, I think yeah. that's that there's a bit of a distinction there too, yeah. That people, when you're putting these videos out there, positioning, you can say your position or you like, oh, I'm this position, I'm that position, I'm um the expert. But the only position that counts is the one that's in the mind of the viewer that's watching you, and you don't know that, you don't know what that is, but they're going to do that for themselves based on their understanding of life. So, like you said, if they, if you know more than them and they feel that that you're really delivering your stuff to them, they're putting you up on the pedestal way further than you could even imagine you would do. Right. Well, part of it is, 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 is your expertise, and the other part is having some proof. You know, when you have proof of something, uh, when, you can, when you can demonstrate a level of proof, some kind of proof, whatever you're selling, whatever you're promoting, you know, uh, that automatically proves to people in their mind, oh, this person, this guy, you know, he knows what he's talking about, she knows what she's talking about, and now they're a lot more open and willing to, and eager to listen to you and to take out their wallet and pay for your information if it's going to help solve their problem, okay, yeah. and that, that's really what it comes down to is, you know, whatever, everything that we do, we're solving people's problems, okay, because if you're not solving somebody's problems, then they're just not going to be interested, they're not, they're not going to pay you for that, so, so let's, let me, let me ask you this, and, um, you mentioned that, that okay, you, you record a video. Now I want to now get into some specifics, if you don't mind. Yeah, now I'll share. <laughs> um, I'll share everything openly. Whatever you want, man. Just I'll lay it out. So prior to doing these interviews, you've never done interviews, right? Prior, prior to that, no, no, okay. I'm not like a journalist or anything like that. I have no. You're, experience. Not, you're not. A, you're not a journalist. And one of the stumbling blocks that people have with internet marketing, and especially with creating their own product, is that they got to do something new that they don't. They've never done before. Okay, they may be an expert in. Or, or they have some knowledge, or they've obtained some knowledge, or they got some good information that could be packaged together, but they've never done it before. Okay, um, how did you take that that step into? Okay, you know what? I'm not a journalist, but it's it, it's it's not that hard to do, and, and and you put it all together. I mean, what did you do? You got a mic, like I, got, I see you got a real nice mic mm -hmm. there. Uh, uh, you know, you you got some software, uh, and, and 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 what did you do? I mean, okay. how, 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 how did you put I, it I started so. How hard busy. was it? Or how easy? <laughs> for me, it wasn't hard to, to manage the technology because I've been trying, I've been doing all this stuff for three years anyway. So I knew how to put make a video with my laptop, where I, you mm -hmm. know, I can would talk to the to the camera. Like right, I'm using a webcam now, but I didn't even have a, a separate webcam. So I was talking to right. Like to you have like a built built in camera. Yeah, like eyesight or whatever they call it. So it's a Mac that I use. So just the built in camera, no nothing fancy. And I could open up um, iMovie, the program that it came with, the, with the computer, and I could talk to the camera. And I knew how to edit the video, cut, cut things in and out, and muck around with sound or whatever. So I already had those skills. So for people that haven't got those skills, they're, they're a little bit challenged. They might have to learn something. But the first thing I did, all I had was my laptop and a Skype account and Camtasia. Okay. Those three things. My laptop Camtasia is basically an editing software that... that Edits yeah, videos. I have that. So I used to just record series. the screen because I've in the past I've created screen flow <laughs> type, you know, uh, slide shows and all that kind of stuff, and talked over the top and trained and done different things. So for me, what I did was actually more simple than what I was ever doing. All I did was like just like now we'd have a Skype chat. You'd organize it with someone. You'd say, "Hey, I want to do an interview. Um, we can talk about exactly what to say in a little bit to actually to invite someone to an interview to, and actually have them say yes." So you would invite them. They would agree. You'd set a time. You'd meet up at that time, right on time. You'd hit Skype, hit you know, call on Skype, and you'd have a conversation. I'd hit go on Camtasia, and we'd have a conversation. And it was just my laptop, uh, Camtasia, which is the software, and uh, Skype, and that was it. And I just recorded. And the questions that I asked were based around what I actually wanted to learn from that person, because I'd had 
a lot of struggle and a lot of trouble in trying to be successful in three years in internet stuff because, like you said, it was completely brand new, knew nothing. I wanted to learn about what these speakers knew that I didn't and I knew that if I just asked the questions that I'm interested in that I could learn something that someone else just like me would probably want to learn the same thing. And here's the thing, the people that I asked were speakers. So just like Peter Sun, when I went to research information on Peter Sun to find out what was I was in for for the seminar, the speakers that I was interviewing, I was creating the same type of content, but you know, 40 minutes to an hour long, not just like little snippets of them live. I'd create really valuable content for someone who was doing that exact same search that I was doing three years ago. So when someone types in, oh, what, what is there about this guy? You know, first guy was Jeff Slater, who I interviewed. They type his name into Google, and because of now my SEO experience, I, I ended up owning, I checked, I got to about 40 pages deep inside to Google, 40 pages before any reference to my interview disappeared. So I, got, I, could, I really went deep with SEO on that one to test a system that I'd created. But that, that so was it. That's what's it. interesting is, is that basically you were creating content from other people's expertise. Yeah. I knew nothing you about did not. <laughs> you became an expert by piggybacking off of other experts. Yes. And, and in my right? training for the last three years, I understood that and it was on purpose and deliberate and I'm associating mm -hmm. with that people. So when people watch right. that, they're associating me with that expert, which gives me an elevated exactly. sense in their mind that, wow, this Peter guy must be all right if that Jeff guy that I'm interested in will hold a conversation with him on a video. You know, that's, so I understood all those principles that were going on in the background, which is why I chose that to do that, to help elevate myself. But I love promoting other people. I, I kind of almost find it hard to promote myself because it's the Australian way. It's kind of... It's a difference between Americans and Australians is Americans to us in general are very generalizing here. Like I've come to love Americans, um, but they're very just open in saying how awesome they are. And in Australia, there's the thing called tall poppy syndrome where anyone that kind of does that, you, people cut them down as, as big headed and, you know, a, yeah. a term for people it. People are a lot more modest. You're a lover. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's not necessarily a good thing either. Because people don't yeah. own their, their awesomeness. People are awesome. And the, yeah, kind of the culture is not to step out and do that. So for me, it's really good and comfortable and fun to go, hey, check out that guy. He's got all yeah. this great information and it's awesome. And I get to put my content on Facebook. But it, automa saying, it automatically positions you, like you said, it elevates your status. And, and, yeah. and it positions you in, in, in the other person's mind as, oh, okay, well, he's associated with him. And so, yeah, they're, 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 kind, know, of, they're, all, they're the kind of friends. Principle now. of association, exactly. Yeah, and, and I understand, and here's the great thing about interviewing, which I don't know if you're going to ask, but the, a great thing about interviewing is I now have the ability to create these interviews. To get the second one, what I do is I say, hey, to someone that he knows, would you be open to doing an interview just like the one I did with this guy? And that guy actually trained the guy I'm now asking on how to do business. So I'm asking someone who knows that guy, and wow, if Pete... If Jeff said yes to Pete, sure, I'll do an interview with Pete. And then you go to the next guy that they both know. So you're, now you're building your reputation. You got a reputation going on. That's, that's right. That's... And, and what happens, <clears throat> what, what's kind of cool about that is you get that reputation. People in a community get to know you. So it's like a band becoming famous in their own area. Um, other people in the area get to, to watch it from the sidelines and, and hear about it and talk about it. So you're starting this thing of buzz around you and what you do. And, uh, and it, it's all around promoting other people. You get to bring value in the first conversation. If you're at a networking meeting, here's another thing. Here's a, a way that I use the fact that I do interviews. If I'm at a, a networking thing or if I'm at an event and someone says, what do you do? It's like, oh, actually, you know, I, I have a, a web show. I interview influential speakers, entrepreneurs, and authors. Instantly, that guy in front of me is probably an, a, an entrepreneur, an author, or a speaker. Mm -hmm. And he's interested in what I do now because he's thinking for himself – wow, how can I get promoted? How can This guy might be able to help promote me. You know, like it's totally selfish on their part and I appeal to that, that, that element that everyone's out to looking out for themselves at some degree, right? So right. the content right. that I create creates situations where I now have value to add to that business without trying to have to sell something to that guy. And so when I approach someone, when so, if someone was to approach me and say, hey, Pete, can, you do, can I interview you for my show? I want to promote you and put it on Facebook and, and on my website and, and send my list to you and all that. Instantly, you're, instantly, you're really valuable in my eyes now because you can do this thing for me 
and and you're willing to and you're happy to and it, and I know that it helps you because it's going to elevate your reputation and that's why I do it to elevate my reputation and on and on it goes so everything about the scenario supports everyone involved and so yeah you get to bring value to someone that's, first that, that, and that's really important that there's a lot of value um, inside of my training uh, the internet profits blueprint which is basically teaches people how to create your own product information product and, and as you know, there are many different ways you can create information products. But one of the ways that I teach is that you can go out there and interview people. If you don't want to create an ebook, or if you don't want to create your own videos and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, as far as doing it all yourself, then one of the simple ways to do is you can actually find an expert and you can go interview them and, and, and have them use or, or use their knowledge and their expertise uh, to create a product. Okay. So that's basically what you do. You're doing it differently. You've you got a show going on, but it's the same concept that you seek out, or now they're seeking you out, uh, you know, experts, and, and you interview them. And so it's not really difficult to set up from a technical perspective. Um, mm. and, and, and you already mentioned that, that people are receptive to it. So, so uh, I know that sometimes there's a, a lot of the stumbling blocks that people have are, are in, inside our minds. Uh, so would you say that most people are receptive to being interviewed, I mean, how difficult is it to book an interview with with an expert? Uh, if if you could, what, what would be? Because I'm not the expert in that area, you are. Yeah. So I want to ask you, you know, what are some of the key points that you can, uh, uh, you know, give us as far as approaching people for interviews? You know, how how do you, how do you get people to say yes? Okay, um, it's it's really simple. You're not always going to get a yes. You're not always going to get a response, but if you don't put an email out there or you know, reach out to someone, you, you, you're guaranteed to get no response. So the first, I'll tell you how... So action, taking action is point number one. Point yeah, number one is going, just do it. Do it. <laughs> do it, right? And, and, but, well, but then the yeah, next question is, well, what is it that you do specifically? I'll tell you how I did it because a lot of the things I think when people watch interviews and learn stuff, they go, well, if I do exactly what he just said, then I'm going to have this wonderful result. It's not true. I'll tell you what I did that worked for me. And maybe it'll work for you too. Go try it. Uh, and then you know, tell me how you went. And if it doesn't work, try it again. Try someone else. So what I did was that first guy, I went to a, an, one, of, one of those free events. It was a speaker. They were talking about all kinds of stuff that I was interested in, about positioning yourself as an expert. And one of the thing, key things he said was, you need to go out and interview experts for exactly all those reasons that we just talked about. And I already knew that, but he was saying it. And I went at that same event, I, in the in the break in a, in a moment, I said, "Well, can I interview you? Yeah, you know, I'm actually looking at going into this. Could you be my first interview? I've actually interviewed someone else a year or so prior to that, but that that was uh, Jim Yagi, and that was a, an audio interview. It was diff- that was just me trying stuff, and I reached out. And to Just him. so people know, Jim Yagi is a, is, is a very you know big marketer, very savvy marketer. Uh, it, it's a name that uh, it, it's it, it's not just you know somebody <laughs> off the street. I mean, it, it's yeah. somebody that really knows what he's talking about and doing has built a very successful business. I think he's built co- several businesses. Yeah, in, uh, in different he's, niches. He's a superstar, but he's so yeah. humble and so yeah. just kind of relaxed and reserved in a way. When you see him on Facebook, it's all wild and sort of out there. But when you actually talk to him in person, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of. So how, how did you get Jim Yagi to say it? Because okay, he's he's somebody that you know, like at a scale of one to ten. You know, with, with 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 one being like you know your 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 guys that are just trying to get into a market, and, and ten being your your top level experts. He's a ten, okay. Yeah, and you were just starting out. How did you approach him, and how did you get him to say yes to you? I'm just curious. The, if, you, if, if you don't mind, sure. no, no, absolutely. This is the key. I, 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 even privately, I mean, I could probably dig up the email that I sent to him, uh, and put you can show, show it to the members. Um, I won't show you his response because that's his private response yeah. but i can show you what i sent to him and it's exactly the same principle which was on purpose again so i'd learn a lot of psychological stuff and copywriting stuff to try and you know engineer a result that is beneficial and that they would want to respond to so the the, the second interview at, i was at the event so i could actually physically shake his hand and ask him and he could look me in the eye and say yes let's do it with jim yagi it was an email cold but what i did the whole purpose behind all of these uh, interactions is connection. Find something that you can connect with them about a common thing that you might have a common interest and, and draw, the, you know, draw their attention to that information. So with Jim Yagi, it was on Better Networker that I contacted him. I was sort of a bit involved there, got some articles and videos, used to put stuff through there and look at his things. And I sent an email and said, hey, Jim, I, I read something that said he was from Sydney or he lived in Sydney at some point. And I just sent him an email to say, hey, Jim, I didn't realize you lived in Sydney. I'm in Sydney too, man. And that was it. 
It so it doesn't have to be anything crazy like, you know, you went to the same school or, 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 or you know, you have the same passion or whatever. You know, we live in the same city. Hey, there, I, there's something in common. That's it. Yeah. You used, you used to live in Sydney. I, I know, where are you living now? So I, I got him to maybe... It was an in. It was an in. It was something that you found that, was, that gave you an in to start a conversation. Yeah. And he's in America hanging out with all these Americans and all this stuff. So yeah. like finding someone from home is like, oh, wow, you're... So instantly he said, "Yeah, I'm from, yeah, I'm from Sydney. I, I'm living here now." And I just sent an email, "Oh, cool, man! Like, you know, I live here. Where about did you used to live?" It turned out he lived like at a place I used to hang out, hang around a lot when I was uh, sort of growing up and playing in bands. It was an area, and so I said, "Oh, yeah, cool. You know, I used to. I think we might have even mentioned a street. Oh, what street?" And he mentioned the street. Oh, yeah, I know where that is. That's up near this. So we just started a conversation. We just socialized, and then I said, "Hey, Jim, look, I'm looking at interviewing." people like st- getting into interviewing people i've never done it before and i'd be honored if you'd be the first my first one that i could i could interview you know would that be cool you know how would you be open to doing that and he responded saying yeah cool no worries yeah let's do it and we set up a time and we did it it was on skype but he was on his phone so it was an audio not a video but i mean it was just i just reached out and socialized and connected based around something that we had in common i mean and it was Very good. i knew it it was on purpose but I, I actually didn't do it initially to get an interview I just thought, wow, now I've got this this connection. Mm-hmm. Maybe we could do this thing. And uh, yeah, he agreed it was, would be a good idea to do that. And we did it. And he actually coached me. So you got to take action and you got to find a connection. I mean, there's yeah. got to be some kind of a connection. Of he course. actually coached me on how to do the interview. I said, oh, what do I do? I've never done this. And he actually, we probably spent about half an hour or 40 minutes just talking about what I'm doing, what he's doing, and, and kind of constructed how we could make the interview kind of work. And then we did it. And he told me about value and what someone who I also might want to interview what they might be looking for from me to what value can I bring to that person, even though I don't have a list, you know, that type of stuff. He can, can you give us that. a couple of tips? We can probably spend, you know, two, three hours talking about this, but, yeah. um, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not going to keep you that long, but, <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, right. but since we are talking about interviews, you know, can you give us a couple solid tips that people could take away? And, and, and one of my, one of my goals with, with, with interviews that I do, like, like I'm interviewing you right now, um, is, is I want to, people to take something away you know we can talk about all the you know a lot of stuff but i want people to take at least one or two things that are actionable they can go and take right now and, and, and run with it and do something and get results this month so if somebody says okay i'm looking at this i'm listening to, to you guys and i'm going to go out and i'm going to find the experts and i'm going to go interview them and create an information product with it okay give us a couple tips that you think would be extremely valuable in, in, in putting together an interview okay here's what worked for me i was interested at the time when i started in speaking. I'm not, I was maybe going to become a speaker, speak about internet marketing. That's you know, I'm passionate about internet stuff. And I'll, that's why I was at that event. So I, I pick your topic that's going to benefit your end goal. So at some point I thought interviewing is going to help position me as an expert in the internet marketing space. I want to create products in the internet marketing space. So I should talk to people about what they do in business that would help support uh, me making money, I guess, on the back end. That's kind of my value is I want to sell internet-based kind of products and services to help train people. And so choose your niche based on what it is you probably want to sell at the other end. So And then focus focus on that niche. So when I got that first one with him, with Jeff, I focused on how I got the next one was I saw someone that they were promoting at that event on the, the uh, projector screen or whatever, like... They were saying, we can help you build your Facebook page. And the Facebook page that they were showing was of this guy. So then I went, okay, well, I'm going to talk to that guy. So there there was a connection between those two. And then there was someone, I thought that worked well. Notice connections is another tip. Notice when something works and try and reproduce it. So then I went to the next guy who was on the thing. I said, I've done an interview. How often would you be to doing an interview just like the ones I've done with these other two guys that you know, mentioned them by name. Here's the link. Go check out how it turns out for yourself to see if you you want to do that. So find your niche and then start building connections within that niche. That's the first, first tip is uh, build that, that little connection base. You just need your first one. The first one's the hardest, makes it easier to get the next one. And then from there on, it's just easy and easy. And when you show them what you did last time, they get to see your work in action and go, that turns out great. Yes. I'm happy to do that. So that's the first tip. Now the, the second one is if you're going to send an email, the way that you send an email to these guys is Generally, you want to highlight something about them that it is that you like, you know, pay them a genuine compliment about something of theirs that you saw. Maybe it was a video um, and that kind of gives you a reason to why you want to interview them. So, for example, 
the the Facebook guy, you know, that I uh, interviewed, I think I, something along the lines of I went, his name's Roscoe. I said, hey, Roscoe, um, love your work. I, I love your Facebook page and, and uh, you know, s- checked out some of your videos. Um, really good stuff, uh, you know, t- uh, becoming a fan of your work. Um, how open would you be to doing an interview with me just like the one I did, you know, with Jeff, which is he knows him? Um, you know, let me know. That was it. It's really simple, really short. People don't have a lot of time, but it's to the point. Pay a genuine compliment about some work that they've done um, and ask them the way I phrase the question is how open would you be to doing an interview just like this one? The embedded command, I'm not much into NLP and all that sort of stuff, but when you're asking that question, it's not like would you like to, which the answer is yes or no. It's how open would you be? It's implying that yes, I know you would be open, but how open would you be? to doing an interview just like the one I've done with your guy. Yeah, you're kind of assuming that they're moving forward, so. Yeah, yeah. I know that they're going to be happy to do that. Right. Who would, if someone comes to me and says, how open would you be to me promoting you and <clears throat> filming this interview just like the one, and like the one you've done with this other superstar that you're now going to, yeah, I know you're associated with, great. Yeah, that sounds like good. I would love for you to promote me on all these channels. So that, that's... And so where do, where do you go for it? Where, where do you, uh, where do you, would you recommend? And I'm not going to ask you specifics like where do you seek out or where did you find them all, you know, people that you've interviewed, but where would you advise somebody to go and, and, and find people? Like, for example, I, one of the things that I tell people is, you know, look for experts like authors and, and article, uh, uh, people that write articles, you know, there's a whole slew of things, but what would you advise? Yeah. You know, where, where should people start? Okay. Well, look at, look at your, it depends on if you're on Mac or PC, look at your favorites or look at your bookmarks in your computer. What have you bookmarked? Who are the people that you're following? Who are you buying stuff from? Where are you actually hanging out right now? What's your community? You're on Facebook. You're in a group. You're hanging out somewhere, connecting with someone. Who is it? Check them out. So where are you spending money? So what events are you actually going to live? They're probably the, that's the first place I would start looking. That makes total sense. That, that, that's, a, that's great. Because that, that you're interested. Sense. And the people Absolutely. that you want to hang out with are probably interested in the same thing. So if you're exactly. the guy that makes the connection, sends that email, gets the yes, uses your, your, your Mac, and I would even suggest not to use Camtasia screen software. Don't film your screen if you can help it. Mm-hmm. If you've got Mac, it's a, a little software program called Ecamm, which is what I use to record Skype interviews. It's $20. Um, yep, and I found one called, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's E-V-A-E-R, but I'll, I'll put it in the resources. So, so that, get that. Because I have a PC and it's nineteen ninety five. so yeah, it's 20 bucks, and I just push the record button, and uh, yeah, it works. Yeah. So. so what I would suggest is is that... And actually, it does two things. It records a video and records an audio, so you can turn it into an audio interview and a video interview. So and now you, you can transcribe two different it. ways that you... And you can, you can transcribe, transcribe it and use it for text for an article or a blog post. Uh, yeah, video you can is pay somebody a, a few bucks to, 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 to transcribe it, and now you got an ebook, or you can print it. I mean, you can. You the now science. have three different ways that you can deliver this information. Now you've got a whole package that, that, that that's you know you, that you can sell. You that's right. Video, so, audio, the, transcript that somebody else created. You didn't create it because you were just asking questions. They were the ones giving you the content. So your skill set is your value, right? The skill set of being able to just reach out and have the confidence to reach out, do the thing, film it put it out there in front of someone that's your skill set you don't that's your expertise now and it doesn't take much if you've you've probably already got a laptop i would say you definitely got a computer because you're watching this now 20 bucks on a piece of software and a free youtube channel and you're on your way you don't even need a website no you can put them up on youtube absolutely. put them on youtube put yeah. them on facebook join join a particular forum that i've just joined it's that i've found recently which is awesome particularly you know, sorry to touch you. if you want to sell it i mean I, I show people all different ways of how you can put it inside of a membership site but even with youtube you can make it a private link on youtube and uh and, and put it on a, on a blog on a password protected you know whatever yeah, uh, yeah page so so it's really easy to do i mean it's not like you, you don't need to be a technical expert to do all no. of that and and if you don't know about the subject that you're talking about but you're, you're asking about but you're <clears> interested <throat> you're probably in the best position to be interviewing that person because you're finding out information that you personally want to know and you are excited and engaged in that conversation because you're finding out for yourself and I would assume that other people want to know that stuff as well. And that's when you release that information to them. They're like, wow, I'm so glad you found that because I wanted to know that too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, the big takeaway here is that you don't need to know everything. You just need to get started and you can seek 
people out who do know more than you do and, and, and make that connection. And like you said, you know, the, the, your value, the, what you get paid for is the, is, is the value that you bring, but it's not just your value. It's by bringing somebody else's value to your subscribers, to your list, to your whatever. And, uh, you know, by making that connection and putting it all together, that's, that's as a marketer what you get paid to do, basically. So, <laughs> so you don't have to have all the answers. And, and the other thing about, by the way, interviews is, is book authors. You know, that, that, to me, that's just such an untapped potential of, 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 of finding people that will gladly give you interviews because most authors are broke, okay? <laughs> most authors, they're not marketers, okay? Maybe they're not broke from, maybe they have money or whatever. They got some other things going on, but, but they're not making money from their books. I guess that's what I'm trying yeah. to say. Maybe they're not broke, but they're, but they're not making money from their books, okay? Uh, because when you sell a $10 book, let's face it, you're, you're not making much money unless you sell a million copies of that book. And most books don't sell, you know, millions of copies. So, so the, the bottom line is they, they got a book out there on Amazon, maybe they got five books, but they're hardly making any money because they're not a marketer. So if you can take your marketing skills and you can reach out to that author, and I think that most of them would 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 just be crazy to, to to say no to you. I mean, why would they deny the publicity? They want to promote their book. They'd love to be interviewed. Okay, who would want to be interviewed? So, um, so I think it's pretty simple to do. It's just, you know, like you said, taking action. That, that's the key. Just, just make it happen. And yeah, like you said, so, and another, I'll give you two more, like probably one more way that I could do it. You could, but this would work with anyone. So look at your list, look at your email lists that you're on. So, you know, you might be on Frank Kern's list. You might be on this list. You're on 10 other lists. Look at the lists that you're on. And here's one way that I got an interview, which gave me a whole thread, this whole backlog of information and connection um, based on, a, on a, a, a whim that I had one time. So a friend of mine, you know, when sometimes uh, you, you opt into something and they say, look, if you put three other email emails in here of your friends, we'll give you these two bonuses. So then, you know, yeah, so like, like a viral inviter or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So what happened was a friend that I trust, it's all about relationships, right? And connection. A friend that I trust had dobbed me into one of these three put your three emails in this list and you know we'll give you these three things because it was from a friend who put it in the the copy in the email was your friend his name's Armin your friend Armin said you told us you might be interested in this check it out and I went and I knew exactly what what had happened I, I understand the scenario but I thought well if he is saying I might be interested in this knowing him I probably would so I clicked on the link and went and saw what it was. I opened the, the video and it was a guy called Jerry Robert who teaches people how to become an author, but not to make millions of dollars from writing books, but to be the guy that wrote the book on the deal. So instead of handing a business card, you say, look, I'm an insurance guy and you, you were telling me about your problems there. Look, here's a book that might be able to help you solve that problem. It's a book that I read. So it's using that yeah. as an expert. So that, that's his whole deal is teaching people how to do that. And I was watching, I thought, that's really interesting. You know, that, I like this guy. I liked him. And I thought, you know what, well, I'm going to, I actually re just replied to the email. I didn't know if someone was going to be able to read it, if it was an autoresponder thing or if it would connect with anyone. But I said, uh, hey, Jerry, just registered for your event because it was coming out to Sydney. In two so I registered. I thought, I want to go to that and, and see what it's all about. Just registered for your event next week or in two weeks' time that you're doing in Sydney. Um, looking forward to it. Think it'll be great. Just to flip this on its head, I'd love to help you promote your event. Um, how open would you be to doing an interview on my show um, to help promote that event? Here's three other interviews that I've done recently um, you know, for you to check out to see if you think it'll be a good fit. That's the kind of language that I use. And I hit, hit send. And that's all I wrote. So I didn't pay a genuine, I sort of paid that genuine compliment. And the way I kind of say... Well, the fact that you register for the event. Registering for the event. event I've bought into what he's selling. Yeah. That's yeah. it. I've said, look, it's, it's almost like that I've bought the connection. The product. I've bought that the product. The connection. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's the connection. So register for your event. Love what you're doing. Like to flip that around and help you promote it. How open would you be to doing an interview on my show? Here's three others that I've done recently for you to check out to see if you think it's a good, if it's a match. Then they, re I'd got no reply for about a week and I thought I, I forgot it that I even sent the email. It was just totally on a whim that I did it, but because I'd done so many interviews and sent so many emails, sending an email like that was just a natural part of what I do. Even the wording, the language, I don't have to sort of follow a template. It just came out of me and I sent it. A week later, they said, I got a message from his assistant here in Australia. He said, hey, look, just want to have a conversation about this. I think it, you know, it looks great. Saw your other interviews, like what you're doing. So we had a real person-to-person -person conversation. She called me up and we had the conversation. 
we kind of realized, you know, about 14 emails, you know, seven emails back and forward after the conversation, trying to line it up. We made it happen. And from that, he gave, a, I, I turned up to the event, walked into the, to the counter where you register. And they, I said, oh, you know, what, what's your name? Oh, Peter Montgomery. And they went, oh, Peter Montgomery, come over here, you're VIP. So I was made VIP at the event, so I got to sit at the, the front table and they actually put me on the sponsors table. So all these big companies sponsored the event. They made me one of them sponsors. So I'm sitting at the table now with all these sponsors. Um, well, that's when I went into the event. They said, oh, the doors are opening in about, they were talking to each other. They said, the doors are opening at nine o'clock. Uh, oh, Pete, you can just go in and speak to Jerry now. We'll let the others in later uh, at nine o'clock. So I got to hang out with Jerry for 45 minutes personally while he set up his event. And then together, we were shooting videos together. Um, he's, you know, I'm filming him with his iPhone. He's, he's made a whole series on how to, um, the life of a speaker. So from leaving his place on the plane, here's how you do, here's what you pack. At the event, he's talking about his slides and how you do your slides, all this stuff. I'm filming it. He's mentioning my name in that video, which he's since put up on his blog, as, you know, mentioning me in those videos. So all these other people are watching that and hearing my name. So we're watching that and he just made me feel like we we're just old friends, you know, we, I felt like we we're old friends. He's just such a seasoned professional, such a connector. Anyway, I'm sitting at the sponsor's table. He's mentioned me to the, to the whole room. Hey, I just did an interview on Peter Montgomery's show. Um, you yeah, definitely want to talk to this guy to, to 200 people. Uh, so instantly the whole room knows me now and wants to talk to me. Um, from that, they actually already, they even set up an interview with their um, vice president of their, their, marketing company black card marketing group um so they said they came to me said we've actually organized an interview with our our vice president um and i said yeah cool would you be able to they're asking me would you be able to do that one yeah so i've done the interview with him they actually set up a prize for the, one of the authors in their system right they teach people to become an author they said look pete would you be open to doing this we want to create a prize for someone which is an interview on your show so that they can go out. So basically they promoted their book, whoever got whatever the, the details in that competition, whoever got the most people to download their book that they just created uh, there for free, whoever got the most downloads wins the prize uh, of an episode on Peter Montgomery's show. So they're promoting me to their list as a prize of something that is prized in, in the eyes that of an author. That gave you such, you on my show. such expert status in all these other people's eyes. And then that guy who it's came to the show. It's all borrowed credibility. He's so promoted. Like he's promoted our interview to the hilt to everyone, because he wants to promote his book and his author. He actually got a an offer from someone in Poland. He's in Sweden, by the way. The one, the guy that won. He wrote his book because of our interview that we did. He he had a Polish businessman offer or want to get in contact with him. He emailed him. He said, "I saw the interview you did. I want to talk about a ten thousand copy first purchase of your book because I want to introduce your ideas into Poland." I don't know how that conversation went down, but the interview created that situation for them. All of that, now that's a testimonial on my, on my website, now all of that came from an email that I sent on a whim. Hey, I'd yeah. like to send this email. And things can just happen like that once you start that ball, <laughs> once you start that ball rolling, things start happening. It's an opportunity creator is interviewing people. That's fantastic, you know. I was going to ask you some other questions, but you know what? I just noticed that we're uh, at the top of the hour, and I don't want to keep this too long. I did want to ask you some things about SEO, but I think maybe if we can do another If you ask me, I'll interview. answer. I promise I'll answer really quick. Well, okay. Well, that's fine. I mean, I got time. If, if you're yeah, okay I'm happy time, to, man, if, a bit, however long this know, goes. I'm because gonna... I, I, I love what you just said about, you know, uh, uh, taking action. I mean, like you said, you sent an email in a win, but look at all the doors that it opened for you, and look at all the stuff that happened just from that one email. Now, that <laughs> and and mean I got that an incredible testimonial. And I got an incredible but, testimonial from and Jerry. And a testimonial. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a whole slew of things that happen. Now, that doesn't mean that every action you take or every email that you write is going to result in that. But if you don't, it's like it was a, the Wayne Gretzky said, you know, you will miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So <laughs> you got to take every shot you can, and you never know which one's going to score for you. Okay. So um, that would be, actually be a great way to end the, sh to, to end the interview because I wanted to end it on a real high. But I do want to ask cool. you uh, about an SEO because uh, you brought up something before that you know you, you do a little bit of SEO or some SEO to get your videos to rank higher and and, and then your content kind of gets spread out all over the internet. Briefly, can you can you tell me real quick, you know, what are you doing with SEO? You know, what are some things you're taking? I know Google keeps changing all the time, yeah. but but one thing I know for for certain because I've done a lot of SEO too. Uh, um, although I personally like paid traffic, I just like to pay for stuff and <laughs> stuff comes in yeah. <laughs> right away. But uh, one thing I know for sure with SEO is that Google loves content. You know, Google loves 
fresh content and Google loves authority. So, so if you can get links like from authority sites and stuff like that and, 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 and other people, you know, uh, reposting your stuff and th th that gives you a lot of Google love, so mm. to speak. Talk to us really quickly about you know what you're doing and, and what are your thoughts on that and what what's getting you results right now. Okay, now I've got very specific SEO strategies that I do for interviews, as opposed to if I was just creating some something to sell a product that someone could click on the link and and go buy that thing right now. So specifically for interviews, just like I was looking for information on Peter Sun when I found you, I, I view it the same way. So I've got what I put in the title of my my videos, of my blog post, of everything, is name, interview. So, for example, we've you've been uh, on an episode on my show that goes Vitaly Grinblatt interview. So someone that's specifically looking for an interview with Vitaly Grinblatt, they're definitely going to find it. And then I put the title of your business. So if someone's looking for you or your business name or a combination, so if they write Vitaly Grinblatt, no BS marketing, or Vitaly Grinblatt marketing, it's all going to be in that title. So that's where I want it. Then in the body of the text, I never try and force a keyword to work. I always try and make it natural because once someone finds your keyword, once they click on it and they're on your page, you, they're interacting with you as a human now. So you want your yeah, now, now, now you don't human. want to write to the search engine. You want, you want to write to the person. So, so it makes sense. That's right. Just keyword stuffing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't stuff it. So oh, you don't need to do much. You, it's, keywords go in your title. In the, in the background of a web page, right, which people don't naturally, don't always see except for the title, it goes in your title, it goes in the URL because on a blog, whatever my title is generally becomes my URL. So it's yep. in the URL, it's in the title, in the background, it's in the description text. So when it comes up on Google, uh, it's it comes up in the description, Vitaly Greenblatt interview, blah, blah, blah. And then I make a couple of lines about what you're going to get from the interview. You know, Vitaly Greenblatt is a, a great internet marketer and he teaches people how to do X, Y, Z. That's so it's a complete description that, that comes up on Google. Hey, I was looking for exactly that information. There it is. I'm going to click on it and see what it's all about. And uh, then in your tags. So I'll put the keywords in the tag, you know, my name, my website name, your name, your business name. They're all the key places that you, that's so title, description, tags, title, and description, of tags, course, keywords. you know, when you're, when you're in, in the actual blog post, I mean, just the fact that you mentioned my name or whoever you're interviewing, that's going to automatically trigger that that you know that post as as you know that keywords in there. Yeah. You know, so you're not trying to trick Google. You, you're trying to yeah. deliver a clear message that this page is about Vitaly Greenblatt and his yeah. business. That's all it's about, right. and that's all that's all you're doing with SEO. You're not trying to fool them. You're trying to add value to them because they're trying to add value to their customers. The interview is good content. You don't need to trick anyone. The text is there to highlight exactly what the page is about. You don't need 5,000 keywords, just a few keywords, in the, one in each of those places, and that's going to do the trick. With a blog, I also have in the background, this is more technical, um, just, it just pings the RSS feed to the search engine. So there's about 80, whenever I hit post. What do you use? Do you use a plugin? Yeah, it's a uh, Max Ping Optimizer. Max, I think blog, Matt, Max, Max Blog Press. Yeah, yeah that, I mean. that, that one. Oh, I forget yeah, what that's that's what, that that's I, what I recommend. So you got like a whole list of RSS feeds and every new post and just ping it. As soon, as, so, I hit, soon yeah. as I ping it, it tells the search engines, hey, there's something yeah. new over here. They come and look at it and they look at the, the, <laughs> the spiders go look at the title, description, URL, all those little places and they go, oh, this is about Vitaly Greenblatt. When everyone types this in, this is a, a good candidate to put up there. And then when other people link to it, naturally i don't try and force links i don't try and get links um but that just kind of happens because it's good content. So when you do it on facebook when you post it on facebook and you link your page uh, you know from facebook to your page that's an important link when people come to your site um and they like your stuff you know do you, do you have a i don't remember i think i think you do but i'm sure yeah. the, the social buttons you know for people yeah to like I, it, my social buttons i limit them to the the big the key ones twitter youtube facebook linkedin and pinterest so I put okay. a video on the interest. Uh, yeah. just, just the main ones. Like I don't go crazy with it. Um, and I'm all about interacting in some certain places. So I interact on Facebook. So when right. someone puts it up there and they leave a comment or they like it, I, I thank them for it. And, then and that's one of the things that Google looks for is that inter interaction because they yeah. want the user experience. You know, if there's interaction, that means people like it. If they like it, that means it's relevant. If it's relevant, they'll, they'll, they'll reward you with, with higher ranks. Yeah. I mean, that's, 
basically what SEO is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? And I used to do the social bookmarking thing and use only wire yeah. and ping it out to yeah. all of them at once. And, uh, but then that's, it does. I don't need to do it, that now. My stuff just ranks yeah, because you know, I'm sensible with it. Yeah, I used to do that too, but uh, I think that's, you know, a few years ago that kind of started uh, fading away because everybody was started using it. And when everybody does something, then it, it loses its effectiveness. So. That's right. And Google actually registers if you're active on that social network. So they see if you've got friends and if you post and if you right. regularly talk to people in a real way or they can they can see that it's an automated thing. It's okay to do that here and there if you've got a really important post that you just go, look, I'm just going to do it on this one to help kind of boost it. But I, I rarely do that anymore with that. I do use it in other other ways, but not with interviews. Are you doing anything? Let me, let me ask this because I'm not I'm not a big expert on videos. I mean, I've, I've like I said, I've done a lot of SEO, but it was more for blogs and, and different in different niches like that. Um, for, with videos, are you doing any kind of video sitemaps and, and, and anything to optimize your your YouTube videos to get them to rank high, or are you just kind of letting it naturally? I do happen. the same thing. Here's the th here's the thing about SEO. Wherever you put your content, you do the same thing. So if you look at my title and the information, if you look, at it, so it gets a bit technical. But if you look at the if you view view the source code on one of my pages, you will notice that it's very similar to the one I put on my YouTube video. Wherever I put that content, it's got the exact same description in the title because right. that gives you the same stuff on a, on a web page, on a YouTube video, on a social network, anywhere where you can post content and article directory. Once you've figured it out, they're no different than each other. It's just a piece of content that has a title description, a place to put your keyword, uh, and pretty much that's it. And so when I'd make a video, I make it say the same title in the description. I make sure that that title is the first thing, or I put the link very first thing, which has the URL, which has the keyword in it anyway. And then I, t I say the keyword, Vitaly Greenblatt interview, uh, no BS marketing. And, and in the keywords, same thing. So once you've got your title, you pretty much just go, I cut and paste. So I'll make the title, yeah. whatever I want it to be, cut and paste it into the first line of the description, cut and paste it into keywords, and then I'll just sort of make the commas between them to separate. So it's all the same stuff. I mean, you're really not same doing stuff. Much, anything much different. The, the, the big takeaway from this is with SEO is have a keyword, the right keyword in your title, in your description, in your keyword tags. Yeah. And, and that's it. And basically just deliver good content that people will comment on and, 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 and click on and, 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 and then nat yeah, natural link to because if and they it, like it, they'll bookmark it, they'll share it and, and it kind of takes off from there. And that's what Google wants. They, well, they want people to to spread your stuff naturally without you having to force it. That's, that's right. Basically. Interviews are naturally shareable content. There's yeah. definitely going to be two people that share an interview, the interviewer yeah. and the interviewee. Uh -huh. You're going to be introduced to my audience. I'm going to be introduced to your audience. If yeah, a couple so there's of those, a cross promotion going on. There's yeah. cross pollinization of lists, and if if someone in that sphere around sees that and they like it, they might click like, and it'll come up on the little ticker thing on the side of Facebook, and then someone else will go, oh, my friend just liked that. I wonder what that's about, and they might look at it and go, watch it, and it's it's the human interaction that actually happens, which creates the best SEO. The best SEO is invisible. Mm -hmm. So if you, I, I kind of say some web pages when you look at them when they're over optimized, they, it's like they've got Tourette syndrome and they're shouting keywords at you that yeah. don't make sense in a proper sentence. Well, I've done a lot of that, and you yeah. know what? The reason uh, I know it is because I've it, it as well. It 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 it, it works very well a few years ago, uh, but Google catches on to this stuff, and you know, like I've used, and you know, I want to get into all that discussion, and but uh, I, I've used uh, virtual assistants uh, to basically do nothing but create these sites for me and these feeder sites with links and, and that's all I did all day long. Mm. <laughs> Just create a whole bunch of links, create new feeder sites and it worked like crazy for a while but Google catches on to this stuff and yeah. they change their algorithms and, the and SEO actually, we just eventually about. everybody, yeah, everybody got hit with it that was doing that and what I realized is that, you know, it was good and, and, and it worked for well for me uh, but Long term, what's going to work is just great content. That's I mean, right. Yeah. All that other stuff, you know, is not. But the most important stuff is thing is, is is good content. Good content that people will like and share, and like bookmark and so forth. Yeah, the, the SEO related. that we just talked about is evergreen SEO. It's never going to go out yeah. of fashion with Google. Create good yeah. content. Let them know what it's about in those keyword one time in each of those places. You're done. People will do right. the rest of the work for you. Uh, and it's not, not going to say that it's always going to happen, but here's the thing that makes SEO work the best over time is once a week, I put a blog post up, it pings the search engines, and I make a video. 
other people like it, watch it, and interact with it. Yeah, Gen- generally, I probably get about maybe a hundred views on some, and I get five hundred views on other ones. I don't know what's going to happen because it's based on their audience and how interactive they are with their database. But that's basically it. And what Google's going to notice the most is that I have a regular posting schedule that uh, happens all the time in a natural fashion. It's not bam. There's all of a sudden tons of content. It's naturally delivered over time. And it's fresh. It's and consistent, and, and Google wants consistency because if you, especially if you have a new site, and all of a sudden you just start creating stuff and, and just getting all kinds of crazy links back and all that, they will penalize you for that. Yeah. Um, so, so you don't want that to happen. I mean, you want it to happen naturally. But if you're on a regular, consistent schedule, then, then, then that, that's what Google wants. They want consistency, yeah. not just something that. And, and they want fresh content. That's another thing is they want fresh, updated content. So just because you did an interview. You know, six months ago with somebody, you know, that may still be ranking for that particular keyword, but but your website is not going to get much Google love outside of that keyword because you don't have new fresh content. Versus if you have something every week, now you get six months worth of stuff, and you're ranking for this keyword, and you're ranking for this keyword, and your whole site gets lifted up because of all these keywords that you're getting ranked for. So that's right. The so authority of that. I think your content creation is probably the best SEO you could do. Is just mm. con- just that little you just drip feed and feed and feed and imagine five years from now, fifty two interviews, you know, with all these other extra natural links. You know, like we did an interview, you put it on your website and you link to my website. It's just a natural right. link. And yep. what Google is noticing the most now, what's going to work, is all those random article sites that had nothing to do with internet marketing. You know, a, a an internet marketing article on a garden reviews website makes no sense. Right. A garden article, gardening article on a garden review website makes sense. So what yeah, it's got to be re- re- relevant. It's totally it's relevant. Be relevant to be between the, the posts and, and the website. Yeah, my my, my show is all about business and marketing and uh, internet stuff. So when you see no BS marketing linking to my website, it makes sense. It makes Google sense. sees that it's that's a sensible link. And yeah, the but, link but, is, but, but if a weight loss product is going to get linked in, it's just going to throw yeah, everything out of whack. Sense. So forcing those links isn't going to work either. So it's a, what happens naturally too is most people probably put our interview onto their website with a link. So yeah. over time, a handful of those 52 interviews I do each year, a handful of them are going to link to me naturally. Over five years, I'm going to have a whole bunch. And then everyone who takes your video and embeds it on theirs, trying to entice people to go to their website by using your video, the good ones, the nice ones, put a link to you as well. Makes sense. So, so yeah, I, I really, I don't stress on it too much. I just, that's how, that's my No, but I wanted to ask you because that's important because that's how you generate uh, ongoing traffic. And, and so the content you're creating is kind of an asset that's going to continue working for you down the road. So, so that's right. you know, it, it just depends on how you position your interviews. If you charge for them, that, that's one thing because that's, a, you know, that, that's going to be a product. But if you're doing some free interviews for promotion, like what you're doing with with, with your show, then, um, uh, then then what starts happening is you, you know that all that content you're creating is just going to lift up your site and going to send you hordes of traffic over, over a long yeah. period of time, not a short period of time. And, and so. what's going to happen if you do that? If you have all these interviews, you don't necessarily have to have a show, but if you have a page on your website that's all interviews, you know, one page right. with a list of interviews that you've done that all then link out to the separate interview page all those pages are going to lift your website up as an authoritative site in that niche. Like that's what's going to happen is Google's going to recognize that this site is now a resource rather than just an advertising mechanism. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like a hub that, 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 that's, that collects information and, 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 and that's what Google likes. Google likes those hubs and, and, and those, you know, yeah. uh, they, they, they look at it as an authority site. Like yeah, it's, it's a long-term strategy. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. If someone wants to make money online now, I wouldn't suggest doing interviews. But no, if, but that's a strategy that you can implement. To yeah, I think grow. if you want to be in the business for a long time, yeah. it's a great right. strategy. Because right. I, I plan. But, to I, like, but I like the idea of using years. interviews also to package products. So that that's a huge takeaway. Well, too, that's another one. Yeah, to actually create products, it's a fast way to make information. Mm-hmm. If I was yeah, to sit down and try and write what we've just described. I'd be here for months and months and months writing right. it down. But I can talk to you. You ask questions. I don't even know what you're going to ask next. And you're going to extract information from me. You can. You then have the, the time to go back and go, okay, we've got an hour, maybe two hours. I don't know how long this is going to go. But you have two hours information it is a lot of text when you break it down. You might send it to Fiverr.com yeah. and say, transcribe this. And it comes back as this massive amount of text that you can break up and create so much 
information from this little exercise that we did today. So interviews are the best way to extract information from someone. Yeah. Very good. Well, listen, um, I really appreciate you coming on the show and, 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 and uh, you know, doing, doing this video interview with me. And uh, I want to wrap up with this one question uh, that, that uh, I think is, is very important because I want people to, uh, you know, I, I, I want people to take action because without action, you don't get results. And I, and I love the fact that you keep, kept hammering this all throughout. You kept saying numerous times that, you know, the key was that I took action. The key was that I wrote this email. You know, if I didn't write that email, nothing would have so, so taking action is really important. But other than just taking action, I mean, there's so many different things that, 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 that you can do. Uh, so I want to ask you this as we wrap up. What advice would you give somebody that's, Starting now, or, or or wants to kind of get things going again. Maybe maybe they, they just, their business has slowed down, or they're just starting out. They're they're brand new, and you know, especially now when we're at the beginning of the year. We're recording this in January, so everybody's got to have their you know New Year's resolutions. I'm going to make X amount of dollars, you know. And by the by, the, by the February rolls around, which is actually not too far from uh, from now. Uh, you know that that starts kind of fading away, and uh, uh, but I think it's important that you you know you you keep that momentum going from. From January to February to March, uh, but most people don't. So, mm -hmm. what advice would you give somebody? Uh, you know, knowing that that our audience, people that are listening to this, they're in the internet marketing space, they're in the information product creation space. Uh, what would you say? And possibly, and I'm just you know, you, you can say whatever you want, but uh, maybe even think back to when you started. You know, like knowing what you know now. Maybe what, what, what would have you done done differently? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. to get things moving quicker. So what, that's a, that's what a great last question. ideas that you want to leave us with? Well, let's talk about if I was to go back, you know, before when I first clicked on that link and I met you and you had that system, if you've come across something like that with loads and loads of information and options and I didn't know, I, th I felt like I had to learn everything. My first thing is you don't have to learn everything. Pick one thing, which you're going to hear 5,000 times throughout your career. Pick one thing to master. For video interviewing, uh, for interviewing, I would say do video because it gives you all the information that you want, text, audio, and video, which you can create the most content with. So I would suggest, if you don't know already, learn how to shoot a video, learn how to edit a video, get the Skype tool, Skype recorder of some sort, whether it's the Ecamm or the one that you said, Eva for PC or whatever it was, you'll put a link there, and that's it. Shoot the videos, uh, edit the videos, and put them onto YouTube. Just get started is the main thing. Get started and only do that. Just do that one thing. Just do that one thing. Set a schedule that you know, as often as you can. If it's only once a month that you can get an interview. When you start out, get your first one, get your second one, get your third one, get your fourth one, get your fifth one, get your six one, seven, eight, nine. I'm up to 39 interviews. Uh, I'm about to start up again this year to do my 40th interview. Wow. You just so start. Consistency. And you don't so just start. start and just be consistent. And, that, and I think that's where in any business, this business is no, no, no different than anything else. That's where it, it's no different than even working out. You know, every, a lot of people start and they never, and they never follow through. So, so yeah. keeping, you know, staying consistent and just following through on what you've set out is, is, is crucial. So, so I think that's, yeah, I just want to sort of recap on that and, yeah. and highlight one more point. So start, learn video, publish your video, and only take on something new. This is the key point I want to talk about. Only take on something new if it supports what you're already doing with your video interviewing. Shiny new stuff that comes out online, forget about it. Just forget about it. It's not important. It will so be only, important only use stuff that adds value to what you're doing. If, yeah. it, if it enhances what you're doing, and that's what I talk about a lot too, is if, if it enhances what you're trying to accomplish, if it adds to your objective, then, then, that's then right. go for it. Do it's a gonna, little copywriting it's gonna take you away. If it's going to deviate you from 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 what you're doing, and it's only going to yeah. it's only going to mess you up. And yeah, it's going to take you off track. Just stay on track. And if yeah, for example, if you're going to do a copywriting course. Do a copywriting course to help you write better descriptions for your interview posts. There's a reason for that copy. Write better copy to make people watch your interviews. You know, you want to start a blog? Start a blog so that you can post your interviews up there with your descriptions. And that's it. And that's what you're sending people to. That's it. 
Stay on, get on track and stay so, on track. So, so pick a goal, and then everything you do needs to be supportive of that goal, or you just don't do it. Yeah. I mean, that's really – pick the route that you want to – you're going you're gonna to go for, right? That, 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 that one thing, whether it's video interviews or, or whatever it is. And it can evolve, too, I mean, yeah. if you get experience. Once, once you've got the experience, you will know what you need to kind of, kind of, For a period of time until that – until you make it work. like you said, you know, you started with one interview, now you get forty interviews, and your stuff is all over the place, and you're, you're being, yeah. you know, you're, people are approaching, people are me. seeking you out. Yeah, yeah, and 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 what's happening is I'm known as the interview guy in my community now. Anyone who talks about interviews, they come to me. It's Excellent. not. It's, I didn't start out great. I didn't know everything about the show, how to put a show together when I started. You know, back at interview one. I didn't know where I would be at interview 40, but now looking back, you can change direction as you need to, as it suits your goal. That's, that's it. Only change direction when it suits taking your goal further ahead. And then, um, so yeah, yeah, that next book that you that comes out, it's the next Seth Godin book and it's awesome. Buy it. If it's going to help you with your interviewing. That's it. Makes all sense. Makes so, all sense. Yeah, I wasted so much time. So last everything. thing, uh, I'm going to put the, the link under the video here. Uh, where can people contact you? They want to uh, listen to your show, sign up on your list, and just follow you. And, and I hope people do follow you because you know what you're talking about. And I think, uh, uh, you know, as far as interviews go, you are the expert. I and mean, people can learn a lot from you just even watching you. So, uh, what, where can people find you? Yeah, okay. Go to thepetermontgomeryshow.com. And you can find me on Facebook. When you go to thepetermontgomeryshow.com, opt in to the little thing on the right there. It's a very blank, plain website on purpose. Um, it's devoid of all razzmatazz and flashing things or whatever. The content for me is king. That's what it's all about. I'll brand it one day. So when you get there, it's going to be very plain. On the right-hand side, there's a place where you can put your name and email, put it in there to receive my latest interviews. And just under that, you'll see a little Facebook uh, thing there where you can click on that and then come like the page. But if you opt in, here's a little thing that I do to you, just another little tip to leave you with. My opt-in, when you click opt-in, it says you need to confirm this email. When you go to the email to confirm it, that takes you to my Facebook page. So then you can like that, like the Facebook page once you're there. And that's it. Oh, and then I interact. That, that's actually a great tip. That's, that's, that's a good tip. <laughs> I interact on Facebook. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of where I hang out the most on social, social places. And they're, they're the two key places. Peter, thank you so much for uh, doing this. Um, I think our listeners and our, our viewers are going to get a ton out of this because there are just so many tips, and we can probably spend hours talking <laughs> because uh, you know it's just uh, I can tell you're passionate about this. So you can spend hours talking about what you do, and, and and I love talking about marketing, and I can talk all day long about it. So uh, we'll have to do this again down the road and uh, uh, provide even more value. So yeah, yeah. anyway, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, we gave them a ton of value, and uh, we'll, we'll have to do this again.